I have got amazing tests for us today. I have been thinking about this ever since I tested the Rife set out on the golf course. How far do these budget hybrids actually go in comparison to oh my, my God, one so length good. Wonder Club that I always speak about? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna hit five with my one length hybrid as a benchmark, and then we're just gonna hit five again with the four hybrid and the five hybrid to see how far these go. Because surely, if they're budget, they won't be as forgiving, they won't no. be as consistent, and they shouldn't go as far? Let's find out. Okay, benchmark time. I'm just gonna hit five away. Then we'll go into a little bit of tech between both of these clubs. I honestly, I'm excited to try these. I think, well, let's find out. Okay, ball one. Remember, this is my one length hybrid, absolute beauty. Let's see it. A little low, that one. Again, it's an okay shot. There we go. That's a beauty. That was nice. Okay, let's just talk tech between each of these. We've only got to look at the bottom of this golf club to see the differences between them. Number one, my Cobra has baffler speed rails and back weight. The Rife RX2 doesn't have all of these pieces of tech on the underneath to help that ground interaction. You can also see here, we have a lot more grooves on my club face of my Cobra compared to the RX2 Rife and it sort of looks a little bit more like an iron this. Other things you've got to bear in mind is the quality of the shaft. This is a bit more of a premium shaft compared to this one in here. Now just to put this in perspective, if you worked out on a per club basis on the RX2 set, this one is about uh, £30 including the price of the bag. 399 was the set. Go and check that out, you'd be surprised. Um, and these are probably upwards right now of 150 pounds. So there's a little bit of a price difference here, but what is the difference in performance? Now, as you go through and look at lots of these um, intermediate, lots of these beginner sets, they don't tend to have a three hybrid. Now, in my opinion, as a golf coach, I actually think that's a good reason. Because if we're brand new to this game, a little bit more loft is gonna be easier for us. Reducing loft like a three hybrid is gonna be a little bit harder for us to hit. But I am genuinely interested to seeing how far these go and we just use this as our benchmark. Here we go, the bit we've all been waiting for. Well, straight away, this feels a lot longer than my hybrid and it feels a little bit more, um, well, it's got a regular shaft in compared to my, uh, my uh, stiff shaft on my, my one length hybrid, but come on, let's see it. In fact, get in those comments, will these actually outperform even though they have more loft? Let's see. Okay, five balls away. This is the five hybrid first. Wow, here we go. That has gone so high. I really hope you can appreciate how high that has gone. I'm not gonna look. I'm just gonna hit these five away. You'll be able to see as we go through this, but I just wanna hit them and, and just see what happens rather than try and manipulate myself to the numbers. Okay, that first one's away. That was hit really nice. That has gone seriously high. Now, as you put this club down, there does look like it's got a lot of loft on the club, but I have to remember, this is like having a five iron. So I'm trying to picture like, as a club golfer and a starter, this is quite an inviting club to hit. I can't believe how easy that is to get in the air. I'm genuinely surprised how high that's going. Quite spinny, but again, I'm gonna add a little bit of something else into this. I wanna see the, because I've hit these first three pretty nice, let's see the consistency and the ball speed that these produce um, on the good hits. 
Okay, so we're still on five hybrid here. I have no idea how far these are going. I know you, you do. What do you think of this so far? Okay, here we go. Ball four. It's a little heavy, but you know what? I wouldn't be upset with it. It's still flown, I think. Maybe a little bit shorter, just visually looking at that. Okay, ball five, five hybrid. Here we go. That was hit best of the bunch. Even you give it a tiger twirl. Woo. That was hit really, really nice. Okay, let's go through these numbers, then we'll go on to four hybrid. So remember, 215-ish was the longest carry with mine. Let's have a look at this. Now remember, this does have a lot more loft on it. Okay, really, really interesting here. 196 carry the first one, 157, 171, 172, 186. Really quite consistently like hit. The one that I, well, it was an all right hit I thought. We had a little bit of a drop in ball speed, but generally, you look at the screen here, ball speed was pretty consistent between the good hits at 135 to 142. And overall the distances, you know what? I am pleasantly surprised. If I put myself in the shoes of a club golfer, that is a good distance to hit this. Okay, this is the one I'm really excited about because this is probably the closest test to what mine is. Let's go. Four hybrid now. When you, when you put this club down on the ground, it looks like it's still got a lot of loft if I compare that to like my three here. You know what I think it is? The lines are quite bright on it and the, the face being silver gives it that illusion of having it having more loft than it than it does actually have. Which again, if this club is aimed towards like a beginner golfer, that's a good thing. But you know what? The argument that I have with stuff like this, why does it have to be beginner? If you are someone with a slower swing speed, could it be something you just, I don't know, could it be a club that would be half decent to put in the bag that really, really could take on the big boys? Well, proof's in the pudding here. Here we go. I'm, I don't know, oh, fly in my ear. Health hazard when being out on the golf course. Um, okay, so we're at the beaches. I'm just gonna make sure we're screen recording. That is a go. On this one, we're gonna do it slightly differently though. I am going to have a look at each and every shot as we hit it, because this is a, a closer comparison. Here we go, ball one. Oh my God, that was hit so good. That could have gone a long way. That could have gone a long way. Oh, not gone as far as I thought, 187. <laughs> okay, I thought I hit that really nice. Now, the one thing that I'm surprised at is because these are regular shafts, I would always have that perception of them being quite unstable and a bit left, a bit right, but I'm not trying to swing it any softer, but that dispersion's not being too bad at all. A little bit toe side, but you know what? Let's have a look how far that one's gone. 179, 179. That has seriously surprised me. Seriously, seriously surprised me. I genuinely thought this was gonna fly a lot closer. Okay, ball three. Again, I would not have that back. The thing that I'm seeing here is this is launching a very, very similar height to what I was doing with the five. High, early. And it'd be interesting to compare the data. 174, 177. That's come backwards. 177 in the air, 174 finish. Okay, final two. Hit really nice again, but ridiculously high. The thing I thought, the, the problem I think we're having here is, here's me say it didn't feel like it was unstable and it's not. The ball flight is really quite stable in terms of left to right, hooky or slicey, but it's just going so high and so spinny, it's not getting enough forwards. Now, a lot of that to do is probably loft and shaft is creating a lot more spin than what I traditionally create with this. But again, I don't know, it's, it's, 
if I needed a 180, well, we'll see. We hit one more, we'll see how consistent those distances are because up to now, I've hit them really quite nicely. A little left, that one. That was literally, what do you know what that's called? The commentator's curse. <laughs> okay, let's talk stats because again, it's not like a, a terrible shot. 192, 182, 177, 179, 187. Ball speeds all in the region of 135 to 142. So extremely consistent. Like if you're looking at a club right now, okay, not a direct comparison between this one, but what I'm looking at is the consistency in numbers. And we're seeing a very, very similar distribution in numbers of ball speed. So what I'm trying to say to you right here is that potentially it's very, very, very forgiving this club. Almost as forgiving as this, and it's, well, a lot cheaper. I'm genuinely surprised in two ways. The dispersion, but also I thought it would go a lot further. Um, maybe because of how I hit it when I was, uh, I hit them nice, but yeah. How I hit it when we were at Vale Royal was, was really quite nice and I, I really had that thought of them flying much further. Okay, conclusion on these budget hybrids. Okay, first off, we know how far this goes and we know it is, in my bag, extremely steady, extremely reliable. One thing that I found because, okay, so as a beginner golfer, your swing speed won't be as high. Now, if you're a golfer with a low to medium swing speed, I honestly think these could be really quite good for your game. One thing that I was finding and why we didn't see much difference in distance between the five and the four was as I was hitting this, it was just spinning more and going higher rather than actually getting its chance to go forwards but the consistency between the numbers really did surprise me so overall if you're someone with a slower swing speed you know what these are not a bad budget option thanks so much for watching and let me know what you think all about these